Okay, well, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> My attention was a little uh, on the left. So how are you guys? Hi, Jim, and hi, Jen, and welcome to Environmental Coffee House. As usual, here we are. Here we are. Colorado, Alaska, hey and Western New York in the house. Uh, Jennifer, can't hear you. Can't hear you, Jen. Jen, Jen, Jen. Gotcha. Okay. See, we do this. Okay. It's live. Hi, guys. Live and, and coming to you in living color. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Hey, guys. Yeah. Oh, we've loud and clear. Kim, oh, everybody's here. Great. Oh, oh, We're going to oh. have a good show tonight, guys. We, we, we have some good stuff to talk about um, as the Arctic broils. And then we're going to go through a thread uh, from Scott Duncan that was on Twitter. Then we are going to talk about the oceans, but we're going to lead in with something that, you know, my favorites, the climate denying assholes. And then <laughs> uh, we are going to go into the animals in the Arctic. And there was an article. So, Jen, why don't you start out and... Shout out to everybody yeah. and what's on your mind? Well, we're we're having a cookout. We're having a cookout tonight. Oh. So um, as the Arctic broils, we're going to talk about abnormal heat in the Arctic in particular. Siberia, our first article is going to be from gris.org. As the Arctic broils, world leaders convene in Iceland to talk yeah. climate change. Lovely. So the temperatures in Siberia hit about um, 87 degrees this week. Ugh. So it's getting hot up there already oh, inside the Arctic Circle in parts due to the jet stream, which we'll talk about, which brings us to our next Next thing, we're going to examine a thread by Scott Duncan. It was hotter in the Arctic than pretty much all of your favorite European holiday destinations today. So uh, that'll prove to be good fun. Then uh, Jim Massa, uh, our very favorite guy from Alaska, uh, is going to get into the throng of it all with uh, Twitter, and I'll let you guys talk about that. And then last but not least is an article from The Guardian and uh, it's about the animals, very sad. Climate crisis behind drastic drop in Arctic wildlife populations, the report about that. So uh, that's mostly about shorebirds and caribou and their species at risk as survival strategies are upended. So that's our show, Sandy and Jim. Yeah, when when Jim wrote the quote about the animals. Um, Welcome. Yeah, it, I, I took it and it really actually made me feel really sad. And, you know, I kind of cried over it. It's it's like, we're just witnessing all of this loss. But uh, so Jim, what's going on with you? Mr. Jim? You say you Jen or Jim? Jim. <laughs> Earth to Jim. Oh, okay. What's going on with me? Well, uh, uh, not much. <laughs> 20, yeah, hour, uh, 20 hours of day. So uh, it, it's, oh, yeah. it's white night time of year. So it's only civil only civil twilight, at least in Fairbanks. Yeah. Uh, it's 24 hours of daylight above the Arctic Circle. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, you know, you know, we'll talk about it later on, Cass. But um, you know, th this is actually one of my favorite times of the year because we have all the snow melting and the and the ponds that uh, are resulting of it. You get all the uh, the birds coming back, all the ducks, cranes, geese, sand, you know, shorebirds, sandpipers, that kind of stuff there. And I've only seen a handful of birds. Uh, you know, I've seen a couple of northern oh, shovelers, a couple of widgeons, a sandpiper. Wow. Wow. That's it. Um, and That's I and cool. there's a lot of places I, I go to to check out, and there's just like nothing. And I've heard, mm. I saw like two cranes flying overhead one day, and, and that was it. That was it. And That's it's very uh, sad. It's one of yeah. favorite. One of my favorite things to do is to go to is to go to the ponds and just sit there and watch. You know, be it the teal 
pulls the wool heads, you know, the golden eyes and all, and just watch them. You know, uh, there's one little place that every year it gets a little pie griever, a grieb that returns. And so he, he was back this year, but, um, uh, I check out these places and, and even when you see the standard, you know, standard, uh, you know, the cranes and the Canada geese, the numbers are down. Mm, so sad. So it's very, it's very depressing. Very depressing. Sure it is. It's, we witness it, but I will say one thing. Here, I have seen my rabbits, and in my garden, as I was doing the things I shouldn't be doing because of my back, called digging, there were worms mm -hmm. in the. I, I was so excited over the worms and the the larvae, little squirmy little things that I think turn into some other thing and you know just the, the just the the whole bio uh anaerobic and aerobic little critters and another thing was i noticed that i had to drive at night and there were dead bugs i have pictures there were dead bugs all over the front of my vehicle so it's not it's mm -hmm. not like i don't know i felt like wow a little snippet are we gonna go backwards and and then like first there's gonna be some things and then poof not i don't know but I, I've been noticing all the stuff. The trees still look like shit, you know. Tanya says a salute to the worms. Yes, go worms. <laughs> I was so happy. i telling you. I mean, the things that make me happy these days are insane. I mean, just worms, you know, the worms. Oh, guys. Well, thank you for being here, Kevin. And <laughs> Kevin says, Sandy's so happy about dead bugs. They're not dead. They're in the garden. <laughs> they're actually living and they're going to make my vegetables grow. So this is good. And thank you already, um, Jin P. Gamma. I see that you have a question. So we'll do that um, in a little bit because we're going to get started. All right. So I'm going to throw up the first article. And Jen, you want to take that one and uh, give it a whirl? Yeah, right. absolutely. Cool. You give well, a you know, the, the Arctic has been action packed. This uh, article has a couple of real good graphics. But uh, essentially, um, you know, while most of us are in springtime, and as Sandy has just talked about, she's got bugs, birds, they're chirping, all these things are happening. But up in Siberia, up in the Arctic Circle, right along the edge of the Arctic ice sheets, temperatures hit 86.5 degrees and going up still. Uh, and this is 36 to 43 degrees hotter than average for this time of year in the Arctic Circle. So these are heat waves that are breaking local records in Northwest Russia. And they think that these temperature rises could continue rising for days. They have found that it's truly exceptional. Um, and uh, we're gonna talk about the tweet from Scott Duncan Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think we yeah. lost Jim for a minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's coming. He'll come back. All right. Um, so this Arctic heat wave coincidentally, it's just weird how the sinistry happens, is coinciding with the 12th ministerial meeting of the Arctic Council in Reykjavik, Iceland. So that's actually happening tomorrow on Thursday. And, uh, or is it actually already happening? Um, Did it? So, sorry, article. Sandy. No, I read the article, but I'm like, is it going on yeah. now? I think yeah. it's, I think it was last it's Thursday. Over. I think yeah. it was, yeah. I think it's over. I think it was last Thursday, but their agenda was climate change, Arctic shipping, human health, and innovation in Arctic mm -hmm. communities. Um, our very own Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, was up there representing yeah. the United States. Mm -hmm. And he is a staunch supporter of climate action. And he has been working on Joe Biden's behalf uh, to shore up the international cooperation on climate change. And uh, this is one of the White House's priority for convening. Um, on climate change. And he spoke at length about this um, in Denmark and Iceland as ahead of Thurs last Thursday's meeting. 
And uh, so the U.S. is providing a whole million dollars, which is like a sad pittance, uh, to further the Arctic Council's environmental protection effort. So even though that is not a huge amount of change, it is a stark contrast to 2019 when yeah. former, thankfully, President Trump yeah. delegated yeah. <laughs> delegated to obstruct obstructed a declaration that would include the word climate change because he was a fucking asshole. Yeah, what an That's asshole. My... Last... Oh, I never yeah. forget that. Mm-mm-mm. I hope he goes to jail. <laughs> um, uh, so... Yeah. Every <laughs> rational great. person we does. May... <laughs> we may see that. Yeah. Um, so the soaring temperatures in the Arctic Circle in Siberia, these exemplify the rapid changes that we are seeing in the region. And there's a really good graphic there, Sandy, from Scott Mm -hmm. Duncan's tweet. And it shows that deep red and purple area. You can see where those two stars are. Right at the Arctic Circle, it was 30.3 degrees Celsius, which is 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Just incredible. So these uh, high Arctic temperatures are among the most severe on record for May. Does not surprise me. But remember, guys, last year, last June, there was a Siberian town that reached an all-time high of over 100 degrees, 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. This is 50 degrees above average. Abnormal. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's really Um, So the temperatures... It really is. So the temperatures in the Arctic are rising at a rate that's twice as fast as the rest of the globe's. And they estimate by mid-century that the Arctic could be totally iceless. I'm going to say way, way, way before then. You know, this is kind of like, well, we'll see. You know, um, there are a lot of wildfires that go on in Siberia. And this is another sign and a harbinger of accelerating climate change. Mm. So from a climate perspective, the Arctic's evolution from an icy expanse to a soupy mess, uh, in other words, uh, permamesh, yeah. is concerning. Right. Um, so... The Arctic Council is taking a look at the economic opportunity, of course, because melting ice presents new trade route possibilities. And this is something that Russia has been preparing for with a new and improved fleet of icebreaker ships. Yay, team. Um, (laughs) Climate change is also making it easier to mine buried resources in the Arctic, like oil and rare minimum minerals and uh, there's a big negotiation over the balance between environmental and economic considerations in the region and this has also resulted in growing tensions between the u.s and russia and these are the two biggest geopolitical powers in the arctic currently um sandy i think there's like you have something i get some feedback do you have your phone on by any chance no <clears throat> thanks no okay no, no nothing that's all right nothing. all right so that's okay so um the russian senior arctic council official said we don't have any fiction f- friction so mm-hmm. they'll see how long that lasts so that's right. the end of that story uh it's kind of a yeah. combo there it's it's uh, i just Oh, we lost Jim again. Oh, I guess we're going to have one of those internet fun nights. All right. We? Well, you know, we are joining back. across the entire continent. So. Yes. And we had some crappy weather today. I don't know what's on the horizon, but we did have some storms. And uh, I was chatting on Facebook Messenger with uh, uh, Jim McHenry, who's here with us. And uh, he was saying, you've got a storm Jim. coming your way. And... Lo and behold, I had to run out and get all the plants, the flats, and bring them back in yeah. that I had taken outside because I'm trying to get them used to being outside so I can plant them in the garden out all the way out so they don't die. Well, anyway, you know what? He'll he'll be back. But what I'm going to do... He'll be back. 
I'm yeah, of course he will. I'm going to pull up the the thread because yeah, this thread is really good. It has really good graphics and uh, and. As we go, Jen, let's look at them together. It was hotter Indeed. in the Arctic Absolutely. than pretty much all of your favorite European holiday destinations. So this was the original one. Truly exceptional. And here's, here's this is, this, this shows, look at, so Jennifer, you see that one? Sure do. You want to comment on these temperatures? As I well, it's pretty up. interesting. So if you know, this is this is a true. Uh, is he back? Oh, yeah. hi, Jim. Jim's back. You? Yay. Okay. So this is a right. I guess this is just a temperature map. It's not even yeah. an anomaly map. And you can see like there's uh, pretty soon in the next uh, graphic down, we'll see the jet stream, but you can kind of see almost a vertical line there. Oh, no, no, no to keep it there. Uh, that's going straight down from Scandinavia, from like Finland, all the way down to like the Black Sea. And that is the cooler part of the jet stream. So there's a tendril of the Arctic, right? There's a big hunk of the Arctic and it manifests in the jet stream and it's sinking over most of Europe. And then where you see the purple and the red, that's actual temperatures. And that is where the jet stream is, is scooping up into the Arctic. So you're getting all the hot air plummeting right on top of uh, Siberia. Just take that, take a look at that thing right at the Arctic Circle. It's 30 degrees Celsius. It's just utterly amazing. But this is an app, uh, a manifestation of Arctic amplification and uh, this is what we're seeing. This is the new normal. This seeing. is the pattern we're seeing. And these are these vertical jet stream tendrils. And yeah, in this picture that you're bringing down, Sandy. If the anomalies. You keep, yeah, if you keep going so we can yep. see the picture. Yep. So there. And see how he says it's you, very... Europe is much colder. We do have Fred Bloggs as a follower. And he's always saying how cold yeah. it is in where he lives in Europe it's I think he's in he might be in Ireland and and it's so this illustrates that issue for him that he yeah. needs to see this is the anomaly map so blue because Europe the whole peninsula that is the continent of Europe is abnormally cold and then you get into the mainland with Russia and up in Siberia just to the east of Finland and it is just red hot and so abnormal so it's a really good illustration sure is hey Jim what's it like in your uh, neck of the woods you might want to fix your mic but what, what's it like in your neck of the woods I do hear a feedback. I think, I think his mic was okay. All right. Hey, we should be grateful that we can even gather, you know, across this I great know. expanse. You're right, Jennifer, as usual. Always a beautiful way of looking at everything. All right. So yeah. let's get back to that. And one, one thing that. Uh, one thing, if I can make a mention, is that when you look at the graphics, to me, I can see how the North Atlantic Oscillation is changing around, how the uh, the low and high pressure systems, which, you know, from the Canary Islands to Iceland, are kind of moving around, and that will also uh, impact uh, the airflow um, that we're seeing uh, in the uh, uh, Western Central Europe. Um, also, another reason for the cooler conditions in, you know, towards like Iceland and the, the UK mm -hmm. is all that melt water from Greenland uh, flowing into the, the northern part of the Atlantic. So that's going to cool down the air temperatures as well. So, Fred, if you're going to watch this, <laughs> now you'll know why it's cold where you are and that climate change is actually happening but he's waiting for the warming where he is and i i, I think and he's he follows on facebook so fred this one's for you 
<laughs> and, and plus, and plus, don't forget the the uh, AMOC is uh, slowing yeah. down, which means the Gulf Stream is slowing down. So there's not as much warmth being conveyed to the higher latitudes. That will also have an impact. Wow. Well, thank you. We have more coming up, and this was the uh, weather pattern is perfect for singling yeah. out parts of Finland. So I'll let you guys have a, a go at it. This this graphic. Yeah, this yeah. is what I was talking yeah. about with the uh, North Atlantic Oscillation, you know, affecting the uh, airflow, um, and therefore it affects the uh, temperature patterns and precipitation patterns as well. Weren't you saying something about precipitation on your, you know, the quote I used? You were, you were, you were talking about that as a disturbing um, issue. Mm. There's a lot of disturbing. Yeah, <laughs> so I guess you're right. It's just everything is everything is just changing so rapidly um, that uh, it, it, it's getting difficult to keep up with all the changes, especially as everything is exponentiating. It's just like, I don't know, I, I can't keep up with it. <laughs> You're not wrong. It's like, that's why I got the title for tonight's show. The ecological events are seen as no more than entertaining, like National Geographic, because most people, even the ones I talk to, most people don't, even it, they, they're so it's out of sight, out of mind. It's disturbing that they don't understand that what happens there is dramatically going to affect and is affecting them. That's and I took that quote from one of your commenters on your channel, Jim Science Talk with Jim Massa. But I did attribute it. <laughs> I did attribute it. Definitely, the person's name was. Um, Thanks to Popart2015, because he had some good comments. I don't know if he watches us here live, but uh, thanks. I glommed it off you. Okay, so let's go further down and check out what's more on this, uh, this tweet, because it was pretty good. Um, here we go. Now here's another one, and I'll allow you both, Jennifer, if you want to take a, a hit on this one first. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, absolutely. I'd like to call your attention to that big yellow arrow. That is hot air that is literally punching its way up into the Arctic, is pushing up into the Arctic. And this is because the temperature delta between the Arctic and the temperate zones is getting less and less, and the jet stream is getting weaker and weaker. And the whole thing is turning into like a melted ice cream cone. That is not a nice little ruffle that rings the Arctic circle. No, no, no. That jet stream is a big mess. And it's causing a very cold summer uh, and spring in Europe. I, my sister lives in uh, East Anglia uh, in Essex oh. in England. And she's been telling me for weeks how cold it's been up there. It's just been a constant cold and rainy uh, spring. I guess we're not quite wow. in summer. We're almost in summer. Isn't that where Jem Bendel is from, East Anglia, I thought? That's interesting. I thought that he was uh, from a little bit more further north, oh, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I have a friend who lives in, uh, in northern Sweden, and they're still getting snow. Oh, and at this time oh. of year, it should be changed already. I mean, it is... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's within separate. within the Arctic Circle, but still, it's this, you know. And we're not talking a little dusting. We're talking snow. <laughs> wow. It's just like yeah. you know, quite a, several inches of the stuff. Oh, I mean, and she'll, she'll post photos. It's like whiteout conditions and stuff, stuff like that. It's oh, the summer oh, without yeah. <laughs> you know, a summer without of, sunshine. A, it's a, it's a white summer. <laughs> Somebody will write a rock and roll song or a or a, a hip hop song about it. The summer, yeah, the summer of snow <laughs> that can mean many things to some people. So, but, but yeah, that uh, yeah, that graphic yeah. that uh, Jen was just describing illustrates perfectly how the uh, jet stream is changing from zonal to meridional and weakening at the same time, and the kind of flows that 
it's it's yeah. doing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Well, then yeah. Then and it's been a one. very, very cool spring here in Colorado. And it's been very, very rainy. You know, Colorado, at least where I live, it's kind of semi-arid. But not this spring. It's just been soaking everything. And everything is just pounding this water. There's so much vegetation. It's unreal. I think I sent you wow. a couple of pictures, uh, Sandy, of my flower the, garden. Yeah, that's for the video. It's, it's yeah, perfect. Perfect for growing flowers. It is flowers. perfect, but you know that's funny because we went from winter to 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 summer here. It just was in the 30s, and I had the wood stove going about a week and a half ago, and then it's been in the you know 80s and hot and weird. It's it's just it's just weather. Mm -hmm. I call it weather whiplash, like Paul Beckwith does. It's weather whiplash. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah. it's, it wasn't until this is, this is, this uh, is a couple of days ago. Off. That, Who wants go ahead. To go? It was, wasn't until a couple of days ago that the trees all finally leafed out. Up oh, here. wow. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. What I, it's been kind what of I was cool. going to say. The days it was where it's warm, like near 60. And then some, but other days it's like 40s, 50s. It's been uh, kind of on the cool side. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Lorax it's said, um, <laughs> here we prepare for warmer temps and larger storms, like Jennifer is saying now. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, well, let's. This is imagine. a little. This is a little off off topic, but I just wanted to call people's attention to it. Did you all know that we had a full lunar eclipse this morning, and uh, there was. Mm -hmm. uh, did you? Could you see it? I couldn't see it. There was Last overcast. Night, it was the I got. Moon. I got a. Could you see it? Well, it was not quite full here up uh, up here in Fairbanks. It was like a little sliver of the moon left over. Oh, but of course, you know, we're having white nights, so it was a little difficult to see. <laughs> well, we had an insane. Well, I think moon. it's always it the I think it's always so special weird. because this is a this was a super moon. It was the closest approach uh I think for the year. Is it is it not right of the moon to the earth and uh, it was a special one. So, you know, it's a, it's kind of a cool day. It was a lunar eclipse day, you know, blood yeah. moon. Arr! I will, Arr! I bark. Come on, Jim. Come on. Bark at the moon. Arr! I had an amazing picture of the moon from here last night. It was so bright that it was so bright. The birds were still chirping at midnight because they thought Aww. it was daytime. They don't chirp like that at night. So there are birds here chirping. They are chirping away. All right. What do you say we move on to the rest of that one? Because it was pretty good um th there was one uh this quick thing here he was showing something that happened in um they're not the the blo the blocked weather patterns are not extremely uncommon similar temperatures were achieved in 2014 this setup is very impressive and then uh, see there's a there's the that was 2014 but so i don't know if he's got any more graphics we want to um talk about i think there's something here let's see if we can see oh it's in french but it's it's yeah. jennifer it's the same it's what we look at all the time yeah. so anybody yeah. out there if you're in uh, reading french go ahead this is for you tonight <laughs> well something about well, te te I, something about temperature records in may at the and the days of the month are on this and temperatures yeah. on the vertical axis so yeah. and then they the the the, blue, the light blue is the, the minimal extremes the red is the maximal and then something about i wonder if it's averages anyway but the pink or the yeah. records the pink dots oh cool you got it cool you got it guys you got it and the other one oh it was showing is this showing the cold the, the colder well area? this is this is where this is where the um thing is the arctic vortex and oh. the jet stream is going up just to the east of finland okay you can see it going up you know so that's where the heat is punching up there 
that's the heat not okay i had to make it bigger yeah. so i could see it the graphics were really good in this tweet and sometimes you know on twitter you hit some some good stuff and the the, the main idea here is that some parts of the arctic have the potential for extreme temperature swings it's not new but uh they're saying but the Arctic, particularly on the Russian side, is experiencing more and more intense heat waves. Last year, we set the all yeah. the new all time Arctic heat record. So it's, we're in it. We are in. We are in it. And yes, they. You know, there's some. Of course, there's still some natural occurrences going on. But it's very hard to gauge what's natural when we've been screwing up the atmosphere in the oceans for how long now? Right? How long? So that's going to bring us to the next uh, interesting you know, that's, piece. That's why, it, it, if I can jump in here for a bit, Absolutely. this is where usually when meteorologists uh, look at the at the temperature bit, you know, they they calculate thirty year running averages. So they, we just finished you know, eighty one through uh, twenty ten, and now we're doing 1991 through twenty twenty. But I'm seeing more and more of studies where they're going back to the 1951 to 1980 baseline because everything has been so warming up that when you compare to like 2021 through the 91 to 2020 average, it doesn't look like it's changing much. But when you go back to 51 through 80 baseline, all of a sudden it's like, shit, that's a big difference. Is that the controversy mm -hmm. so on I'm baselines? More... It's, it's just know. another... Uh, way of uh, uh, analyzing the data but i think it puts it into better perspective that how much things have changed in the last 40 years when you compare it to the 30 years just before the last 40 years so to me that that actually is is more useful information than doing a continuing uh you know 30 year uh, running averages ending on the decade Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. It's good to have the long term perspective and you're uh, better able to see the trend when you look at a longer range of time. That's all it is. I mean, I don't care about the baselines. You know, anybody can say it's a 30 year baseline, it's a 60 okay. year baseline, whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is the trend, not really i mean it does matter where you are but it matters also where you're going and how fast you're going there and you remind well the, us the, the 30 year i guess is kind of a a meteorological standard i like to do 30 year ch chunks if you will when you say mm -hmm. when you compare the temperatures to the 30 year average from 51 to 80 versus mm -hmm. from say 91 to 2020 looking at this year you're going to see a much greater difference to the former than to the latter. And that to me is how you can really make it very stark you know, as to what's going on. Yeah, that's good. Thank you for clarifying for me and everyone. Um, Cause I know that there, there are controversies about that, but the next I, I'm going to move on because uh, I wanted to tell everybody we're looking at a Twitter of feed and I don't know if you could see it. It's probably too, it's probably too uh, small, but this JW Spry comes up and I'm in this thing and Kevin Black Bear News, a bunch of us, let's see, there was, there was a bunch of us that were in this and this, this guy's a no, uh, Long wave radiation, atmospheric warmth, global warming penetrates a mere one to three millimeter of ocean surface. Short wave radiation and photosynthetically active radiation, the sun's light, um, is uh, but did I, wait a minute, I lost myself up to 100 meters, okay. Ergo, your ocean depth theory is sun derived, and then cherry picks some data, and then there's another article that's you know a bunch of climate change deniers, and it turns out that this guy, I don't know why he he's including me, but I guess he's including this <coughs> this bunch of us, and I brought in Jim because I looked at his his profile, J W Spry, and he's got there's a, a website called Climatism the blog they are climate deniers like you wouldn't believe i mean this guy is like look at him here he is there's there's that guy and then this 
So it's about climatism and it's all about alarmism and Agenda 21. It just goes through everything. And it's got the, the usual suspects, Tim Flannery. But they're talking about that, you know, it's a scam and all that. And you know what? At this point in time, give it a fucking break. <laughs> I mean, it's happening, dude. It's happening. Okay? It's happening. So why are you fighting what's happening when it's happening before our eyes? <laughs> it just makes me crazy. So I brought Jim into the uh, the tweet because it was that, you know, saying that we are, uh, it's just the sun, you know, it's just the sun. So, uh, Jim, I brought you in. And I wanted you to explain this. And so here we go. Jim then came in, and I'm going to let you take over, Jim, where I asked you to clarify what this guy said because I knew there was something stinky. And people were retweeting this shit, okay? So I was really mad that people were retreating, retweeting garbage, climate change denying garbage. So... Maybe there's some significance there, but it's the intent of the person. It wasn't that the science was important. It was the intent of the person to mitigate the, you know, to say, oh, there's nothing happening here. So Jim, I'm going to let you take over after I asked you to help out here and clarify on Twitter just what was going on. Okay, I'll try my best here. Um, well, first best. of all, the bit about the, the, the sunlight energy and all that kind of stuff. It's true that long wave uh, uh, spectrum does not penetrate deep into the ocean. Right. That's the red wavelengths. So I always laugh at people who wear red scuba uh, wetsuit gears because you get a few a couple of meters down and water column is black. Because the, <laughs> the, the red wavelengths have been absorbed. <laughs> so I was like, wow, you spent extra money for a red wetsuit. Okay. But anyway, so, uh, this is, you know, so, so yes, the red wavelengths, which are the long wave, uh, long wave radiation is absorbed first. That's part of the attenuation of light through the water column. And the shorter wavelength, the blues, why the ocean the blue? This business of it penetrates down to 100 meters. If the water is crystal clear, which means there's no photosynthetic activity taking place, which is probably in the tropics where you have pretty much a permanent thermocline at shallow layers, tropics are not very productive regions of the ocean. But where you get in places where there's lots and lots of productivity, the sunlight is not going to penetrate down far. In fact, we oceanographers have a very called the Secchi dish. And it's, it's basically a disc. You, it usually can be all white or it can be uh, divided into quarters where you have two blacks and two whites, you know, at you know, opposite ends of each other. And what you do is you simply lower it down. And when you can't see it anymore, go, okay, uh, visibility is down to, you know, three meters, that kind of stuff there. And usually that's all the you know, organisms doing their thing. So... Go. So that was a little missing at least about what he said there with, with, with the light uh, penetration and the sun energy. As far as then he presented some stuff, and this is what I was really commenting, how the oceans below 2,000 meters are getting colder. Okay. So he presents data. Now, I did not see from what paper this supposedly came from if it was peer reviewed or not he only put a little uh, you know, very small it. smidgen of it and not the okay. full paper so i couldn't really look at it then i don't recall seeing this the journal it. or anything like that it was science direct short wave radiation but it was just a little snippet and doesn't it doesn't uh, explain anything except for yeah and that that's that's talking about the uh the sunlight energy. I was talking yeah. about the one we present where he's presented data saying that the oceans at depth are, are cooling, so therefore we're, we're all full of it. Well, this one? he was he said it was below 2,000 meters. Is that that looks like it? Yeah, that is the one. Okay, and I can't really tell where that's from, you know. You know but uh, here's the thing it, it's either. it's okay, it, 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 that's kind of it's kind of moot at this point because 
well, here's the thing. Let's say, God, I'm starting to sound like goddamn Biden here. Here's the thing. Anyway, <laughs> but, uh, it's right. it's you know, it, it, it does, the oceans are getting cooler below 2,000 meters because it's the upper 2,000 meters we need to be worried about. Does he, does he say if it was at 2,001 meters or 400 meters or 3,500 meters? Yeah, the ocean below 2,000 meters is going to have some very cold water temperatures. It's a, it comes under the heading of duh. So <laughs> this little, you know, so he puts this, you know, little, uh, little linear regression stuff in there with an yeah. equation. Okay, did you test the coefficient of that regression? Did you test to see if the coefficient for the slope was significant? What do I mean by that? Remember from your equals mx plus b for you know a straight line equation. M is the slope, b is the intercept. Well, we have a test in statistics where we take the m, which we call beta sub one, but be that as it may, and we test it to see if it is significantly different from mm -hmm. zero. And when I see you know 0 0.0011 plus or minus what was it 6.9 times 10 to the minus something whatever. Okay, when I see that, I guess is that that decision is not statistically significantly different from zero, meaning you have a flat line, you have a constant function. So, so that was, you know, whatever. I don't know what his point was there, but here's the thing. Cherry picking. That was the point. The upper 2,000 meters. Pick. Oh. Yep. Yeah. But the upper, but see, here's, here's what I'm trying, and, and by the way, I'm going to try and see if I can get my ocean heat content video to post tomorrow or Friday, depending on my upload speed here. But okay. uh, I, I go through a detailed analysis of the, some recent data, and the upper 500 meters have really warmed up incredible amount. Ooh. And the warming is felt and seen all the way down to 2,000 meters. But as you go down, and I, I go through in detail, what we're seeing in my, my assessment is that the thermal hailing circulation is slowing down, and which means it's no longer sequestering the heat down to depth. In fact, it's slowing down, I think, to the point where the heat is now staying concentrated in the upper 500 meters which is really warming things up, creating possibly another permanent stratification. We have a permanent picnocline down at 1,000 to 1,500 meters to begin with, but now we might be seeing permanent thermoclines, halo clines, what have you, uh. at shallower depths, which will impact productivity, as, we, as we've discussed before here. So that, to me, is what's alarming, and that's what we should be concentrating on, not necessarily what's happening at 2,500 meters. I was so glad you clarified that. It, it was, they just lose the thread. These guys that cherry pick all this data, they totally yeah. lose the thread and the point of things constantly. Don't you find that, Jen? Yes. I did a video segment some time ago where uh, these people were saying, because CO2 levels increase after temperatures increase, there is no correlation. And then they proceeded to cite a paper to back up their assertion. <laughs> well, they obviously didn't read the fucking paper because the paper basically says the, in not the, apparent, the increase in CO2 after the temperature increase is due to, wait for it, Outgassing of CO2 from the oceans. So there's actually two uh, <laughs> spikes. The one that precedes the temperature increase. After we've, we've warmed up the surface so much more, that's was decreased. So the CO2 outgassed back into the atmosphere. They didn't even bother to read the paper that they were citing to back up their assertion. <laughs> Well, here's where we had the whole Twitter thing. And you just said it about the ocean stratifying. And I was just, thank you, Jim. Thank you. And that that's, you're right. These people will do, they'll do all this, this stuff. And it's sad because it's dangerous. And as we hurtle towards the unknown abyss, they're just going to argue until what? It hits them or until their payoff doesn't pay off anymore. 
You know, the guy's got, a, a, he's got 18.9 thousand followers on Twitter. And I'm thinking, these are 18.9 thousand clueless. What is the clueless thing morons? Fucking morons. Yeah, there we go. The clueless fucking morons. And they're making, what? they're, they're, they're a cult. They're a cult. And they make an yeah. art of sticking their head in the shit and just and staying there. And here you go. Since you just gave me the opening, they get. Yay! He gets this. This, <laughs> this is for you. J.W. Spry. It's for you. You get it. Well, you know what? I might. Now you can go back up. Now you can go back. Yeah. He's getting two. Oh my God. We just can't get enough of this asshole. Oh, climatism. Go back to this website. Yeah, climatism, oh, tracking, God. anthropogenic climate alarmism. Okay, fucking track it, moron. I'm sorry, He's I hate these people. So full of clog the toilet. <laughs> that was good. Really, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> well, I, I, how's everybody so now you, out now there? Now you can go back to blocking him, Sandy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to block him right now. Here we go. One, two, three, before he sees this. Yeah, right. I blocked him. All right, so why don't we move on? To... <laughs> so we can move on now that we had our our little fun with these. I love making videos and like debunking. But but uh, it, 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 you know, good. But, but it, you know, yeah, we just had a little bit of fun. But this is still this yeah. is the underlying and it's a very serious issue with all these idiots spouting. You know, they they think they understand some little kernel of some smidgen yeah. of a concept and then they run with it not knowing what the hell they're talking about and it's just yeah. shut up dude they just have, <laughs> they yeah. end up looking like assholes and they don't even know they're looking like assholes probably it's just embarrassing you know they're probably spin-off associated from the heartland institute i mean i've gone off on them many times they are just the worst the worst of the worst well now that we're I mean, the, the thing is, you know, when they say, oh, it's a hoax. So so you mean to tell me that all these thousands of scientists from hundreds of countries around the world publishing tens of thousands of articles in peer reviewed journals were all in on this? Yeah, Give me a exactly. fucking break, God damn it. That's a, that's a pretty Whoa, good coordination fly. effort. Let me tell you. Well, it is. <laughs> and they have the fossil fuel money behind them. You know, I mean, I. I I often think that's a big motivation for people to be verbal. And, and sometimes uh, when you, let's say you're out there, these fossil fuel companies, they employ people to scout for stooges. Of course. Of course they do. I mean, that's the whole game, the whole media game. It's disgusting. It is disgusting. Oh, yeah. They say, uh, well, well, you're doing it for the grant money. Really? You really even oh. realize how many, what the average salary is of a PhD in, in, around the U.S.? It's less than 100K, folks. We're Absolutely. not exactly raking it in. You want to rake in the money? Go work. Go sell your, your scientific soul. Out. Go work for the goddamn few, uh, fossil fuel 103. Yeah, so, really. I'm sick of hearing that shit. I just am. <laughs> it's so da it's it's dangerous too, but you know the, there's 70 million people that voted for Donald Trump. So 70 million people that may maybe maybe what three million out of them understand climate change. How do you reach them? I don't want to argue with people like that. I want to just talk to them and hear what they where they get their their information from. How I, I you know you just you just hope and you wish that you could break out of this and and it, have it, it betrays watch. the the lack of critical thinking it betrays the declining educational standards in this country where That's people do not even understand thing. basic scientific concepts and we can trace that back to bill bennett the, the uh, former education uh, secretary oh, yeah. under ronald reagan bill and he bennett. started this whole decline and then he had a talk show bill bennett had a talk show a right wing he was a fossil had a right wing talk show Jen, you were about to. I saw you. Well, well, I, 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 
Yeah, it's like the freaking great dumbing down of America, and it's so frustrating. Okay, so I have a quick yeah. little vignette that's a little story. My sister lives in England. She had her birthday <laughs> in May, and I... I wanted to send her a birthday card, you know, so I went to the market, I got a card, I filled it out, and then I actually took it down to the post office because I was late, and I wanted to be sure it would go as fast as possible, and I asked the guy how many stamps, three stamps, put on the stamps, and I say, could you make sure, you know, it gets into the Europe mail right away, and on the envelope, I put, she lives in um, Haybridge, uh, basin and they have the you know the fancy postal code with six digits and alphanumeric and then i put uk my writing is very very legible so three weeks after i send this letter it comes back to me it came back to me yesterday no such address they it never even made it out of the united states they were looking at uk and they're probably thinking that i was talking about arkansas the oh imbeciles <laughs> at the post office couldn't even freaking send it to england i think i'm gonna have to write international mail england in letters because they obviously don't understand uk europe and try to you know i just I'm like so frustrated the freaking post office is falling apart it's unbelievable well, this is a I... great freaking dumbing down of america it is well who's that <laughs> asshole that uh it's the post office uh, general or whatever. He's a freaking, DeJoy. he owns shares. And, Louis DeJoy. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah, he then, owns, is he still there? Why is he still horrible. there? No, yeah. Because they because of a certain that, that's loophole heard. where they cannot they cannot fire him. They've been trying to fire him, and they finally got this lady from Colorado who put our mail at home uh, thing together, and they got her into the post uh, i don't know freaking oversight <coughs> committee and only these oversight committee can vote the bastard out it's just Jeez. such a freaking mess it you know we do it to ourselves and yeah this is what yeah. we've wrought you know try and destroy the postal system and throw away all the sorting machines good job team yeah you know this is what you get good job. this is what you get Good job. Well, yes, and 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 I'll give it a good job, Jennifer. That was a good explanation because I've had I've had similar uh, run-ins with not you know with international mail. So um, I think that's a good segue, guys, to go into the really tough part of the show, and that is Jim had also. Well, as we talk, um, we have a chat. The three of us are in this little chat, and we talk. And Jim often writes something, and I take it and I use it, and and use it for the um, the start for the show. So, Jim, you had written the about the animals, and the one thing I am alarmed at and depressed at is the, that I'm not seeing anywhere near the number of ducks, geese, cranes, etc. here in Alaska. I always look forward to seeing them, you know, by the numbers, going to lakes and ponds, etc. I don't know why the numbers are so low this year. It sucks. I can't spend hours just watching them. And I had to put that in because it was, it was, it, it struck me. It really did. And then here's the article that came up <laughs> after after I uh, after you wrote that. Here we are: the climate crisis behind drastic drop in Arctic wildlife populations. And uh, and here it is. So I thought, well, let's let's talk about this. Let's tag team it, and uh, I'll start. Okay. And we'll 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 see what the Guardian has to say about this. And Jim, you know, it was really heartfelt. And I, I literally I felt so bad for you that you know you were seeing this and experiencing and not be able to do what you enjoy either, which is watching the wildlife. 
So the article starts out about a drastic drop in caribou and shorebird populations is a reflection of the dire changes unfolding on the Arctic tundra, according to a new report from the Arctic Council. The terrestrial Arctic spans approximately 2.7 square miles which is uh, 7 million square kilometers, marked by extreme cold, drought, strong winds, uh, and seasonal darkness. Species living in this environment, they've adapted they, to thrive in harsh conditions. But the climate crisis has upended such survival strategies, according to the State of the Arctic Terrestrial Biodiversity Report, which I'll probably, I, I have to get and share on uh, Environmental Coffee House. Um, it was published by the Council's Conservation of Arctic Flora and Fauna Working Group. So climate change is the overwhelming driver of change in terrestrial Arctic ecosystems, causing diverse, unpredictable, and significant impacts that are expected to intensify, this report said. And the Arctic is warming at twice the rate, well now after this, since this was written, didn't that come out now that we just read three times? Um, it's it's three times, yeah. Yeah, leading to extreme weather events and the emergence and spread of pathogens among native species. So the report that was released last Thursday in Reykjavik. And uh, Jen, you want to take over? And then Jim, you can um, bring up the rear and then talk about this as you see it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we know that climate change is an <clears throat> overwhelming driver of uh, change in the terrestrial Arctic. And let me see. The report drew on decades of circumpolar diversity monitoring mm -hmm. to give an overview of the changes occurring in the region. It appears that the Arctic is becoming greener and the shrubs are gaining ground, slowly replacing mosses and lichens on the tundra. So at the Zackberg Research Station in the northeast Greenland, of Greenland, scientists found that important pollinating flies declined by 80% between 1996 and 2014. And this is, that's only like 20 years, not even, right? And this is um, the climate-induced mismatch between the timing of plant flowering mm. and pollinator flight activity, things are getting screwed up. Yeah. So of these 88 species of shorebirds or waders uh, that were examined, 20% experienced declines in all populations. And well over half had at least one population in decline. So they quote, on, Ar on the Arctic tundra, shorebirds are the most diverse group of birds. If you're an Inuit, these would be backyard birds in your environment. So um, in the Asian Australasian flyway, a migratory pathway linking the high latitudes with the Pacific Ocean, 88% of shorebirds are declining. So this is generally due to habitat loss in Asia's Yellow Sea region, where the birds spend their winters. So it's estimated that under different climate scenarios, 80% of high Arctic shorebirds uh, could also lose large parts of their northern breeding ground in the next 50 years. So the next part with caribou, so the herds roaming from Russia to Alaska. So the climate signal has been harder to separate from the noise. Caribou populations naturally fluctuate and have cycles of abundance. Uh, but for some, the amplitude, amplitude has grown and they're seeing fluctuations beyond known historical levels. The majority of migratory tundra and forest caribou populations have declined in recent years. The Bathurst herd 
And this is a herd that ranges from Canada's Northwest Territories to Nunavut, dropped by 98% between 1986 and 2018. Wow. That's almost wiped out completely. <sighs> So there are several factors driving these declines, and these include diminished food availability, rain on top of snow events, and these are harassing insects, and these also uh, prevent the ungulates from foraging and gaining enough weight to survive the winter. They've also mm. found that warmer temperatures have led to the emergence of pathogens, and these have had a negative effect on the health of some animals. Back in 2012, there was an outbreak of erysipelas, a bacterial infection that affects the skin, and this killed 150 oh. musk oxen on the Banks Island in the Northwest Territories. So this is kind of curious. You know, the musk ox, that's an ice age creature. And, um, you know, sad to see these, there's so few of these ice age giants still left, but the musk ox is one of them. Right. Wow. So this, this, this bacterium is common throughout the world, but it has not been normal for it to show up in the Arctic. It's normally dormant because of the cool temperatures, but the warming Arctic is really changing things. So many mammals uh, have moved northward um, because of the high temperatures. And this also brings in this migration diseases and parasites that could affect native species. And that could Those affect why Jim mocha. is not seeing certain uh, thing, you know, certain species yeah. around his area. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that yeah. is a beautiful picture. That is. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, are you up to so this, picking? Oh, okay. Go ahead. There's just two art, the two paragraphs left. Oh. Do you want me to finish it off or do yeah, you want why to not? go in? Go for it. Okay. So um, the report also talks about the altering predator-prey interactions in the north. So red foxes are known to compete for the same dens as Arctic foxes and even kill them. So now the red foxes are going into the Arctic and killing the um, Arctic foxes. That's really sad. And in Alaska, brown bears are killing musk ox calves. This is something totally new that has only been seen in the last 20 years. It's devastating. So ultimately, as these climatic zones and species shift northward, the terrestrial Arctic ecosystems will shrink. Extreme events which includes the weather, wildfires, and insect outbreaks, will leave their marks for multiple years in a system like the Arctic. Because everything takes a long time to regenerate. Mm. The sustained ecosystem-based monitoring is needed to be able to track such changes over time. We need to understand how species are interacting to fully understand the consequences of climate change on biodiversity loss. So Jim, I th I, we have a little uh, noise uh, on your side here. And if I go like this, yeah, it there's, but there's something I, I, crazy going on in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's named Jim Massa. No, Jim, <laughs> you think you think after reading this article, uh, it it answered some of your your questions or thoughts. And could you possibly um, do a video on this topic? What do you think? What's going on up there? Are you Can on Mars, Jim? Us? Can you hear us, Jim? Well, he'll fix it. I don't think he can. Something's going on. He can't hear us. I don't know. Well, no. And I can't make it Something crazy is going yeah, on. If I do oh my this, God. then we can't hear him at all. Well, I'll put, I'm going to put on our little, um, you know, the, the little ending I, music. Yeah, I think that's an uh, omen. It's time to go. Yeah. Let's do some. Uh, let's do some. Okay, 
How are those modified mosquitoes in Florida doing? Okay, we have no idea, but that's a good that's a good follow up because they did that let out what a gazillion um I have to turn it down, but a gazillion mosquitoes that were genetically modified. How disgusting! But we don't know. Oh you know. dear! It's it's Is that right. It's just it's like what uh, doctor. Um, it's technology. <laughs> it's uh, environmental engineering. Dr. Seema Aguskin that we had, Semi. Oh, my goodness. Jim, are you, like, available to talk, or are we going to have too much background? I think well, that this show is over, Sandy. That's yeah. my assessment. All right. Well, guys, we have 77 total watching, and thank you so very much for coming. We really do appreciate, and we hope that you like what we do very much. And, uh, you know, we we deal with the uh, little live stream things, but for the most part, we did accomplish, right, Jennifer? We accomplished what we set Absolutely. out to accomplish. And thank you. We and did. If you, we want to do another um, thank you to those of you who are most generously um, helping us out through the Buy Me a Coffee. And don't forget, Jim uh, is on uh, Patreon. So... Um, here we go for the evening, guys. Thank you again. And Jennifer, would you like to give the parting uh, goodbye? Well, you know, just keep watching the Arctic because the Arctic is the crux of our climate, at least in the northern hemisphere, but also in the southern hemisphere. Everything's connected. So keep your eyes open and tune in for support and information. We love you all. We love you all. And Jim, if you can say anything, give us a peace sign. Give us the going away peace sign. All right. Uh, oh, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm hitting all the buttons tonight. Here we go. Like and subscribe. And you guys, peace out.